Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon is based on Jesus' metaphor, I am the Good Shepherd. You will see the sinner uses his voice <clears throat> to serve himself, but the gospel is the selfless voice of the Savior who laid down his life for yours. Again, the Lord Jesus saith, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So far the text. Let us pray. O risen Lord, bless thy word, that we may trust in thee, Amen. In the corporate world, the motto is, it's all in the positioning. By positioning, they mean that there isn't a thing you couldn't make happen, a deal you couldn't make go down, as long as you worded it just the right way. You could, we were told, put a positive spin on anything. And in many aspects, that was my entire job, crafting my words to upsell a product I did not quite believe in nor do a thing about, convince customers that price hikes and late fees were in their best interest. I even had to positively position the benefits of being fired to employees I had to let go. Well, the business world literally cashes in on making everything sound a touch better than it really is. But it's a technique we all find occasion to put to personal use. Sugarcoating any bad news you have to deliver so that it comes across as trying to help rather than hurt adding or subtracting from the details of a story so that your retelling of the account becomes the popular version. Sitting in wait for the right time, the right manner to bring a topic up in order to secure a desired outcome, all of which is why we rehearse conversations like these over and over in the head to try and guarantee that they'll play out how you want and ruminate on those encounters which do not, which leave you ending up with a loss, as if you could go back and redo it. You see, all the corporate world does with their positive positioning is put to good business use what we already do to one another. Which is why, when the Lord Jesus warns you to beware of such crafting of language for personal gain, that he uses a business word, hireling. The hireling fleeth because he careth not for the sheep. Don't listen to the hireling, Jesus says, because the hireling's in it not so much for you as for himself, because when the pay's not in it, or the going gets so rough it's no longer worth the return, the hireling, he's out. A self-serving voice, which, upon careful reflection, can be found somewhere deep in each of our voices. Because whether you can hear it with the ear or not, the sinner is ever looking out first for myself. Which can be terrifying to consider how we sheep who love to wander, that nothing you speak, that nothing is spoken without some personal spin. All the more the collective voice of humanity, how we sugarcoat sin as a whole and deny the condemnation our sin should see. 
try and live a good life and you'll make it into heaven. Well, people are generally good natured, aren't they? You've got to get with the times, Grandma. The world's different than when you grew up. All this and more a confusing lather of noise which the soul follows to certain doom. Like lemmings headed off a cliff. Except this ditch for which each of us sheep are headed, though it be only a six foot drop into the ground, it's a ditch you fall into dead before you hit the bottom. No wonder you might question some days of the myriad of voices coming at you in this world from all directions, even, even from family and friends. Whose voice can you trust? In the end, the scriptures teach you can trust no mortal voice. You can trust nothing. We sheep bleed out to one another. None of it can be relied upon. Not 100%. But in our gospel lesson today, Jesus tells you there is a voice you can his voice alone, the voice of the one who came not to serve himself, came not to be served at all, but to serve. The selfless voice of the Savior who says, I lay down my life for the sheep. You see, in his extended metaphor of sheep, Hirely shepherd. Jesus is contrasting the difference between the words and counsel of mere mortals like you and me and his own life giving voice. Jesus, the good shepherd, who, when he looked out and saw much people, people so misguided by one another as you have been. He was moved with a compassion to be found nowhere else, looking upon them as if their real problem was that they were sheep without a shepherd, and thus chose to be that shepherd you need by raising his voice up and above all the rest in order to guide you to green pasture. Now Jesus he most certainly did not sugarcoat his words. He called the supposed collective wisdom of man whitewashed tombs filled with the stench of rotten death. And he sternly warned of dire consequence to that self-serving language which flows so effortlessly from the sinner's mouth. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. No personal spin. Jesus spoke no more and no less than the consistent message your God has been repeating from the beginning. The words that I speak unto you, the word which you hear, it's not mine, but the Father's which sent me. For God had sent his Son to be the voice you need in order to guide and restore you into his precious fold. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. The key difference being this, that the hireling serves himself, that on account of sin, it is impossible for any man's words to be spoken without that flaw. But Jesus' voice, his, is as flawless, as selfless as he is. For Jesus came to die as if his words, without blemish, had been riddled with our selfish ways, to die for your sin. 
in order to offer up his perfect life in the place of ours, in his Father's eternal plan to save. Now this deal, it took no arm twisting to make happen, needed no positive positioning to make go down, nothing other than Jesus' boundless love for you. As he said, no man taketh my life from me, I lay it down of myself. All with one goal, that of rescuing you from the cold, dark ditch into which every sheep eventually wanders and the hellish pit every sinner deserves by rising from the grave himself in victory over everything which draws you there. I lay down my life that I might take it back up again. It's this, Jesus' resurrection from the dead, his ability to do what no other man could, that gives Jesus the authority to shepherd and guide you into heaven with him. Thus he declares, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them and they follow me. His voice is the good news that he who came to live your life came to give that life of his up unto death for you and take it back up again. That this your good shepherd promises to lead you through this life into the next by his all forgiving word. My sheep hear my voice and I give unto them eternal life. Now, it's not a loud voice, per se. Why, in comparison to all that clamor which otherwise fills your ears, this voice might be considered barely audible. But despite all that noise, Jesus, the great good shepherd, yet says with confidence, my sheep hear my voice. This is his commitment to break through the babble of this world, to have his word openly proclaimed and to have his word break through the chatter of your mind and take hold deep within. In the great resurrection miracle that his voice still lives today as it resounds here in these walls for each of you, his precious lambs, to take in and take the heart. Which means his promise, my sheep hear my voice, these words come true in something as simple, yet as remarkable as the perk of your ears at the sound of it, which is nothing other than faith in him. Because this voice of the gospel and this voice alone bears the power to rescue you out of the motley gaggle of unbelief and into the precious fold of his perfect care, yank you back from your wandering ways onto the paths of righteousness for his own name's sake, and draw you out of every anxiety and worry of this life into the hope of the world to come. Because he who so selflessly gives you of everything that is his, no crafty spin about it, his voice is all you need to convince you that whatever he deems to send your way must be, must be in your best interest, in the interest of keeping and guarding you as his blood-bought own. For his soul profit is your soul in his eternal care. My sheep hear my voice, words he'd only say, if these words meant you could hear, recognize him and his voice wherever you wander in life by testing everything you see and hear against his holy, unchanging Now, the many hirelings out there up in pulpits 
Creatures whose mouths are filled with all sorts of subtly smooth talk, who point to a passage of the Bible and claim it doesn't mean quite what you think it does, who exalt tradition, human reason, or the whims of today get with the times grandma over what God plainly says, their false teachings all scatter and flee in light of God's truth to reveal the wolf eager to devour you behind and beneath. Keep away, the good shepherd warns, from that kind of fold entirely, and keep such lies far from your mouths that by his grace in this place, we might be able to keep focus simply on his voice, clear and pure. And if every encounter with your fellow man out there, he says, test it all. Any advice, any story you hear with the ear, test it all against the same inerrant source of everything that God-man has to say, Holy Scripture. Holding fast that which is good and abstaining from all appearance of evil. Letting his voice disarm even any argument which might arise between us blathering sheep by simply admitting that though no voice of man be nearly as right as you might think, his voice is ever and always true. A voice which can be relied upon to draw you back together and to him. That is, one flock with one shepherd, you might continue to have your ears regularly perked up by his one word of life until the day he returns and his voice causes your ears to twitch with life again and every joint and marrow following suit, you rise from the dead yourself to begin to know him like never before. Now the peace that passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.